What's going on everyone? Welcome to Movie Emporium's TV review of the Amazon Prime Original Series, Invincible. This fall will follow Season 2, Episode 7, which is titled I'm Not Going Anywhere. Now, in this penultimate episode of Season 2, um, we, of course, get a lot of downtime. Once again, we get a couple action sequences, but for the most part, it's once again trying to have uh, Invincible or Mark kind of slow down because he's been kind of going 100 miles an hour since the series began. He's dealing with a lot of stuff, including school, as well as being a superhero, which he's apparently not very good at. And it's been a lot. Now, I'm not averse to, you know, a slowdown episode, as I said last week, with the, like, I give what, nine and nine and a half out of ten or whatever. But uh, this is another episode that really is slowing down, and I wonder how it's going to end in the second season with this being the penultimate episode. So it is a little worrisome that they, they, they don't feel like they have moved the needle very much. But I, I guess in the end, it's, it's actually still a pretty, really good episode. It's still a nine and a half out of ten or nine out of ten or whatever, because it really deals with, like, human humanistic approaches when it comes to characters and the fact that mark is a student a young kid like spider-man in a lot of ways but he's also a superhero so he has a lot of responsibilities and i like how the story really 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 contains the struggles of a young kid or somebody that has you know a significant other has a, a family member that they constantly have to run away from or not run away from but like go off on a mission and stuff like that and you start to see Amber kind of fall apart at the seams, even though they try to do things together, but he's constantly being pulled away by the, the people that are need his help and stuff like that. And I think that's a really, really poignant, really kind of uh, uh, interesting way to do a superhero show because you don't see that a lot of times in superhero shows. You see, you know, the struggle, like, you know, the Sam Raimi trilogy did that very well. But for the most part, it's either one or the other. You get the, you know, the personal dynamics or you get the character dynamics of the actions and so on and so forth. But I like how this episode really starts out. And it's actually quite, quite entertaining as well as kind of funny because uh, we see Mark and, of course, Amber at a, like a Comic-Con of sorts. And, you know, she's she's trying to have fun but you can tell that this isn't her thing but she's doing it for her man in a lot of respects and i i, I like the i like the fact that they go up to uh, an artist who's signing their comics and there's this artist who is creating this thing called seance dog and mark asked about season two which has been a <laughs> which is a very much commentating on the idea of where season two invincible and stuff like that but the thing that pulls it even further is the animator goes on a kind of diatribe about how animation works in a season of an animated series so for instance you, like you know behind the scene shots behind the head shots where you know you need to cut corners you know when they get up close you see like uh defined animation and stuff like that you know the, the, the shots of the crowds are never moving this is stuff that actually happens in tv shows especially animated shows like this which is a clever nod to what people don't really notice when they uh, are watching an animated show it's very much being breaking the fourth wall in that respect and i really love that i really thought that was a nice little clever nod to how animation an animated shows work when they need to be strict to a budget and stuff like that you know and like you know spider-man into the spider-verse or something like that invincible is very much a lower budgeted animated show that needs to do a lot with a lot little and that's why it's <laughs> when you when they go when you know, you see like the top half of their faces, but you don't see their mouth moving. It's a way to cut corners on, you know, the animators and stuff like that to, you know, cut costs and stuff like that. And I thought that was pretty clever and well done and well representative of what it's like to make a TV show, especially in the animation space. But it is little stuff like that that really sets the show apart from a lot of uh, other shows when it comes to like the, the, the justification of what it's doing. Because it also gets into the Donald slash William stuff where basically Donald is so upset by the fact that he was made into a cyborg in a lot of respects that he just doesn't want to do this anymore. He doesn't want to be underneath uh, Cecil's character. He wants to be put down. He just doesn't want to deal with this anymore. And then it's the same thing with William who's having nightmares about him becoming a, a cyborg. And like we see the, the person who experiments on these, or not experiments, but turns these pe dead people into robots and stuff like that. And uh, it leads Cecil to basically reveal something to Donald, which I felt that's a pretty impressive like, reveal. It's actually a quite a, whoa, that's crazy that that's happening. Because when you watch it, you realize that Donald has died more times than a cat, <laughs> more times than any superhero. He's died 39 times. And he sees file footage of him dying. 
like, like at least three or four times before he realizes that he has done this to himself, that every time he's died, that he has had his, his, his mind wiped because he doesn't want to deal with the fact that he has died so many times. So therefore, he comes to the realization that maybe he's the one is the problem. It's not Cecil. Cecil does what he asks, and therefore they, they delete his like memory and they wipe it. But when it leads to Rick to want to commit suicide because of these nightmares and stuff like that about the fact that he feels like they took something away from him, it leads Donald to come to the conclusion that it's not the people, it's not the things, it's not you as a human being, like your skin. It's a how you how you how you determine yourself as a hero how you put yourself in the hero space he says something really poignant in that aspect and i felt that was a really really emotional moment because it shows that it doesn't matter who you are you could be a hero you know whether you're small large big fat skinny whatever or you're a cyborg as long as you make the world a better place that's all that matters and that is the nature of i think what this series is also trying to do and what robert kirkman and his crew tried to do is point out that uh invincible mark grayson's character is an individual that is strong but he's not strong against the viltrumites and he's very weak against like other creatures because he constantly fails but he constantly gets up and constantly keeps going forward and for better or worse he is the hero that this world needs instead of the viltrumites who will learn later on is there there's a specific purpose of what they're trying to do i really enjoyed that rex like leaves the hospital because he wants to be a hero he wants to go off it's the same thing with immortal who just doesn't want to deal with this anymore they they, they have to realize that Things are going to happen. People are going to die. Things are going to go very, very wrong. But as long as you keep pushing yourself, keep like throwing yourself into the mix, you will find a way to succeed. And for better or worse, that's what these characters are trying to realize. And it's just the same thing with uh, Amanda and, of course, uh, Rudy. That whole situation where he's trying to help her, but he doesn't need his help. It's just that's what this episode is doing. It's showing that the hero in all of us is different in different forms of factors. But... You know, I like the fact that, you know, the immortal is just, he's a guy so broken up by what happened to Duplicate that he doesn't want to do this anymore, and it really shows, and I felt that it was a really impactful thing. But I also like the, the once again, one, as more I think about this, the more and more I really enjoy this episode, because you kind of have to talk yourself through it, talk your way through it, or talk your, you know, whatever. The idea of, like, Amber and Mark... And the idea of Mark and his mother, the idea that, you know, how difficult it is to be a human in a world that wants more out of you is a really impactful thing because that's the way the world works. You always find something that always takes you away from the things that matter. And here, for instance, the mother, you know, Mark's mother is taking care of this young kid who is, of course, Noah's kid from another mother. And... She does it because not that she wants to, it's because she feels the need to. It's the same thing with, you know, the idea of like Mark is trying to explain to his mother about how he has to keep leaving Amber, how it's very difficult. And she's like, Noah did this. She did what she could. She was, you know, she wished she could have had him there more, but she did because she knew that it was the important thing to do. It's the same thing with raising this kid, Oliver, where the kid's not hers, but she needs to instill this kid with a much better look and feel to the world and there therefore make the kid understand how to be a better person. And that's why I think Mark's mother is very much, I think it's Deborah, is Mark's mother Deborah is a very impactful character because she instills the humanist humanity to a character that really focuses on like what they could do better for the world instead of their whole and stuff like that, instead of themselves. And I like how she also tells him, maybe you need to slow down a little bit. Maybe you need to be there for Amber. Maybe you just need to do something with her. Take time off, whatever you need to do. And that's what they try to do. They try to take, you know, he says, you know, he's going to take two nights off a week. The Guardians of the Globe are going to, you know, because he talks to Rex, they're going to handle some of the situations. Cecil, who's not very, is very much against that, has agreed to it. And they decide they're going to be a couple, at least for a couple nights a week. He takes out the earpiece and stuff like that. And I found that was a really poignant moment to try to, right the ship of this of this situation where amber is more becoming more and more uh disillusioned to the world that mark inherits because she wants a relationship but she doesn't want a invisible relationship she doesn't want a smoking relationship where the the person's always gone there's just smoke there stuff like that but as with most superheroes where there is peace pain will follow 
see it in every character superhero there there's a reason they are called superheroes there's a reason that they're constantly being bothered there's a reason they have so many villains is because they can't have peace that's just not what they're designed or destined to do and therefore when amber and uh, mark are just trying to have a meal there comes another vigil might uh, i think it was Alyssa or Issa or Asa or whatever her name is and she's like i'm going to snap the neck of amber which is you know you, you can see it on amber's face is the look of death and it, uh mark invincible basically says if you leave her alone i'll come with you and cecil and donald try to figure out a way to stop the filter mite because they know mark can't stop her and there's this whole discussion about whether it's a ploy or whether it's a a ruse it's not entirely determined but the Viltrumite, the, the woman, basically explains to Mark that, you know, we can help make this world a better place. We can, you know, get rid of the, the villains. We can get rid of the bad guys. We can give, you know, uh, design, like, you know, scientific stuff to the world to make it better. We can make this world better, but we are going to control it. A lot of, you know, people with, like, uh, egotistical minds and stuff like that will say that to get what they want. They want to make you feel fine. They can made off Hitler before they enlist their evil plan. And that's what it feels like with the Viltrumite. And I think Mark sees that. I think he saw it with his father, he, but he uh, he almost goes with it until they realize they have to stop a Kraken from destroying a, uh, a boat, a ship, a cruise liner. And so he has to go over there. And of course he is very weak. And when it comes to fighting villains, it's just who he is. And of course it takes the, the Viltrumite to stop the and kill the, the Kraken before they save and put on the ship on the beach. But it also comes to the realization that she can't make him stop, that she may realizes that he's weak like her father, and therefore, or like his father, and therefore she beats the crap out of him, and he uh, he almost is killed by the Viltrumite. And it's, it's it really shows that Mark is just not ready for this. He's not ready. He's not, he's not toned to power that maybe the next episode will deal with i i don't know but but it says a lot when he just gets the crap kicked out of him and cecil keeps telling him like you know agree to it agree to it we have a plan but mark doesn't want to do that it's that instilling nature of like he needs to be he needs to find that that centerpiece that point to really get to who he can be and what he can be and it's like between anger and and acceptance and i find that i find that really fascinating when it comes to a character arc because you know once again mark has never been able to strongly defeat anything but he still continues to get up and protect people which is a very powerful uh, uh thing for a person i guess you could say when you are willing to put all your put all your life into your your who you are into it it's just it what makes it work but this leads to kind of the end of the episode where in essence amber has finally come to the conclusion that this relationship just doesn't work she almost died she she can't do this anymore with mark because she it, he it's not who he is it's not what he is it's a it's a very sad melancholy moment just on the simple fact that like it doesn't matter what she does. It doesn't matter what he does. They're just not destined to be together. Or maybe she has to die. Maybe this has to be like a you know Gwen Stacy moment or something like that. But she just realizes that there is too much at stake, and Mark will get too many people hurt if he has connections. And I, therefore, you know, he's really beat up because of the Viltrumite. And um, she, I think, just says it's over. I mean, I, we'll see the, we'll see later on whether it happens or not but it really feels like there's not much that either of them could do to be successfully uh together and you saw that with noah and deborah and stuff like that it's a really difficult thing a really sad thing to see because these people deserve to have some kind of peace in their lives in the process it's just they end up hurting the people they love i mean you see what happens in spider-man a lot of times you know you see what happens in wolverine you see what happens in batman and superman and all these comics and stuff like that and all these characters that you know of course inspire invincible and stuff like that and yeah, it, it really is a sad thing to see, but it is what it is, and it has to be what it has to be. But, but of course, Mark is on the roof, and he gets a call from what he thinks is his mom, but it's Angstrom Levy who needs to talk to him. He has, of course, the, uh, Oliver and his his and Invincible's mother, uh, basically at the at his mercy. And therefore, I think Angstrom Levy is going to have a big impact on the last episode. But we'll see how that plays out. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, the episode until we get to the post credit scene where we have Alan uh, traveling through the stars after the incident with the, the immortal. And we have the the Viltrumites, the one who uh, left the planet, said, you know, we'll think it over. 
we're, we're going to come back either way. And she uh, basically is sh- shown to be a failure, but not before Alan comes along and she goes out to fight Alan because, you know, the Viltrumites are very angry individuals. And uh, Alan is uh, proven to be a worthy fighter, worthy successor, because he's able to not only keep up with the Viltrumite, but he's able to land blows, cause blood to come out of the Viltrumite's uh, nose. And uh, she... she supposedly knocks him out but he of course uh is going to be brought to the ship uh and then we're gonna see what happens there but apparently alan has the blood or the uh the powers of the viltrumites is very much able to keep up his own and it's always funny alan's always been one of those side characters but now he seems very very important to the story of what's going to happen so we'll see what happens in the the final episode of this of this season but once again, to kind of conclude thoughts, um, it's a really poignant episode. It has a lot of things to say about, you know, trying to be who you are, trying to be what you are. Sometimes you have to be more than who you want to be. You have to keep pushing forward. And I appreciate that. Like I said, there are comics that do that. There are comics that go that route. Like I said, like Spider-Man or like Superman, stuff like that. But I think this series has done something that truly makes it remarkable. And I think it really shows that you can create really interesting characters with interesting dynamics, but also still have fun. Like that, that scene on the ship is a really fun scene, but overall I just, I really like these last two episodes. I think they really work very, very well, very, very well. And I think it's a really poignant thing to do this with one episode remaining because you have to wrap up a lot of stuff. But I think this season has been very successful or at least mostly successful with doing that. So I'm going to give it a nine and a half out of 10. I said maybe nine, nine and a half out of 10, but I'll give it a nine and a half out of 10 because I really feel like it works on a really well done, well put together level that maybe it's overstuffed a little bit, but I think it does what it needs to do. It does a really nice job with continuing the story because this is still halfway through what I found out was volume one of the invincible storyline. So there's three volumes and they're really big. So it's really interesting thing to see. So they're, they're following the storyline pretty closely, but overall nine and a half out of 10. So there you go. But with that said, that is going to be my take on Invincible Season 2, Episode 7, which is called I'm Not Going Anywhere. As I always say in the comments below, what do you think of the episode? What do you think about where it's going? Do you think if, you know, does it follow the comic book pretty closely? Let me know in the comments. But otherwise, I appreciate you watching. If you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell top to find what's coming next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit that like button. And as always, we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.